Welcome to episode 21 of the Game Caddy Tutorials. I'm Scott Moeller, and uh, in this video, what I'm going to show you is how to play the EPA Golf Basic Game using Game Caddy version 6.0. Now, um, it might seem a little strange that we're up to episode 21 and we're all of a sudden talking about the basic game uh, when the first 20 videos have been about the master game. But uh, it's become apparent to me over time that uh, trying to learn the master game when you're new to APA Golf and have never played the game before, uh, that can be a pretty steep learning curve. And so I thought one way to ease people through that curve is to help them with a simpler version of APA Golf, which is the basic game. In addition to that, I recognize that there are uh, experienced uh, APA Golf players that know how to play the master game, but don't want to always uh, deal with all of the complexities that that game has to offer. In other words, they are more than happy to sacrifice a little uh, realism for a quicker game that doesn't require uh, as much thinking and decision making. So this version 6.0 is designed to suit the needs of those two groups of people. So let's talk about what do I mean by the APA Golf uh, basic game. So uh, you're looking at the rule book from um, APA. This is the 2014 rule book. I'll turn it over here and uh, show you the copyright date uh, on here, 2014 APA International. That's on the back of the rule book. And uh, everything that I talk about is pertaining to this version of APA Golf. Uh, the basic game is covered starting on page one, and I'll just show you a little bit of what I'm talking about. This is page one, and it says up there at the top, introduction to the classic golf board game, and then you go down and there's some quick rules, and then the basic game instructions. And those basic game instructions uh, are, are not very long certainly not relative to the master game rules. And if you see as I move down to the bottom of the page, we've got those paragraphs, and then I flip it over, and we've got the uh, instructions continuing not much more than a half a page on to page two. Now, truth be told, uh, you actually can't play uh, Apple Golf if you only read what's there on those first two pages. There's additional information that you need to know or understand that is actually part of the master game rules. But you know what we're not going to do in this video is get into all the particulars around that, but understand that when we talk about the basic game versus the master game, it's not a black and white distinction. There are parts of the master game that you need to be able to use in order to just play the basic game. And I'll cover uh, all of those, I think, uh, in this video. Um, and so kind of on that same point, I want to come back to the inside cover of this rule book. And this is a page that people often forget about. Uh, and I know that because of the questions that I get uh, through email about APA Golf. And what you're looking at here, of course, is a sample um, APA card for Arnold Palmer. And, um, and then there's a description of what the various ratings on his card are about. I, I do want to point one thing out, which is that the ratings down here at the bottom are in these instructions referred to as master game ratings. And this might be a little blurry on your screen, so I'm going to read uh, what these labels are. This is a momentum rating uh, for 
when you uh, have birdied a hole. This is a bounce back rating uh, for when you've bogeyed a hole or worse. And I said birdied a hole. You, you could have eagled a hole too. Um, and and those, can, those two, the momentum and bounce back ratings can be used in the basic game if you want to. There's the, the, the game uh, caddy will not stop you from using those in the when you're playing the basic game. Uh, but these other ratings you won't be able to use uh, in playing the basic game. You have to be in master game mode. And those are the two shot making ratings, um, the clutch rating, the sand rating, and the scramble rating. And I'm not going to describe what those are. Uh, feel free to read about those on this page and elsewhere in the, under the master uh, game rules. The only other ratings that we're going to pay attention to when playing the basic game uh, are the woods rating, and this is referring to uh, what's called the average W or average woods rating. And uh, the one over here on the right is the irons rating or average irons rating. And those will be used in both the basic game and in the master game. Now, we're not going to be playing with Arnold Palmer. I've got a, a different golfer uh, selected for this demonstration round. We're going to use a Fuzzy Zeller instead, so his numbers are going to differ uh, slightly from what you, you see here on Arnold's uh, card. Okay, so that's what the basic game is. Uh, you know, if you're a master game uh, player and you haven't read those basic game rules in quite a while, I encourage you to go back and do that if you want to play in basic game mode, uh, because uh, there are things in there that I had totally forgotten about because it had been years since I had read those basic game instructions. And there are some differences uh, in how you do things under the basic game rules versus the master game rules. So not only should new players familiarize themselves with the basic game instructions, but more experienced ones should do so also if you want to play in the basic game. And I will tell you, playing in the basic game goes very quickly uh, because you don't have to deal with very many things. Uh, there's no dog legs. There's no uh, wind effects. There are no lie dice rolls. So you, you can end up with various types of lies, not as many as with the master game, but you don't have to worry about whether you've got a poor lie or, or, or not um, for the most part in, in the basic game. And you don't have to do those extra dice rolls uh, that are there. Um, in the basic game, in the most basic version of the basic game, there's also no aiming and no working the ball although the game caddy does give you the option of turning that feature on if you want to use it. Uh, we'll play a couple of holes today, and the first hole we won't uh, play with aiming and working the ball, and in the second hole uh, I'll go ahead and turn that on just to show you uh, how that works. All right, so let's get started and let's take a look at the game caddy. All right. Um, when you first open the Game Caddy version 6.0, uh, it will look something like this. You may also have something up here that says Enable Content. First time you open the Game Caddy, um, it does that as a security precaution. That's built into Excel by Microsoft. Uh, and you have to enable content in order to be able to use the Game Caddy because uh, the Game Caddy relies heavily on the use of macros. Uh, and uh, macros uh, can be malicious, but I assure you that if you get your copy of the game caddy from me, you never have to worry about that. Uh, and, you know, I don't want to say that the game caddy can't be cracked, but it is heavily password protected. So chances are, even if you got the game caddy from somebody else, it's probably okay, unless that person, you know, happens to be North Korean. Uh, or something along those lines. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and um, open up the game caddy. And the first two questions that you get asked during the caddy setup have to do with what you want your screen to look like, how much space you want the game caddy to take up. And we're going to go ahead and maximize that space. So I'm going to click on yes to both of these questions. And that will blow up the game caddy to full size. It takes a little bit of time uh, to do that, 
on some machines, including mine. All right, so um, let's get into uh, things about the basic game. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come over to the conditions tab here. And uh, the conditions tab, if you haven't played Apple Golf before, the conditions refer to both the wind and the actual course conditions. In other words, how dry or wet is that course. And it also, for our purposes, is going to include things like the uh, pin number, pin location that, that's there. Um, we're going to be playing a different course than Magnolia. I'm going to play Empire instead, and I'll show you how to import a course in case you don't happen to have Magnolia, but that's the, the default course that will come up, and that is the original Magnolia course, uh, not the, the newer one that has just been released by APA. Okay? The newer one is not yet into the game caddy, but it may be by the time that uh, you um, view this video. All right. Uh, configuration settings. We want that's the first thing we want to do, and we can do this either by clicking on this button here or pressing the key combination of Control O. But I'll just click on that button, and now we're into the game configuration settings. Again, if you've just gotten uh, your copy of the game caddy, what you're going to see is that um, the defaults are what we're going to use to um, at least play on the first hole here. So the, under game rules, uh, the default is basic. That's what we're going to use. And in terms of for the basic game, can you aim or work the ball? We're going to go ahead and deny that. The rationale behind denying it is, is that aiming and working the ball are actually talked about under the master game rules. They are not discussed, uh, certainly not in any detail, uh, in those basic game rules that I showed you uh, before. Um, but the game can be certainly more fun if you have the option to aim and work the ball. So uh, I do allow that, but that's not what the default condition is when you open up the basic game. And then you'll notice that a lot of this other stuff is grayed out because it has to do with the master game. So our lie types are all going to be of the basic uh, form, which Base, which, which means that you're going to have a lot fewer types of lies to deal with, and it's, it's much simpler uh, because uh, you're, you're not going to have uh, extra dice rolls to do uh, as you would with the master game. And I'm not going to go through all these different boxes here, but you can see that we have uh, uh, no wind. Whenever you're playing the basic game, the wind is taken out of the equation entirely as are dog legs. They... Um, there's no having to worry about whether you're hitting through the inside of a dog leg or, you know, whether uh, the roll needs to be adjusted because of that, you know, bend in the fairway. Um, again, the basic game is about making things as easy and as simple as possible so that people can learn the game and or play as fast as they want to. Some of these other settings down here have to do with the screen display and how you want things to look on your screen. Won't get into those. Uh, we will leave the scorecard auto fill on. That way we don't have to worry about, you know, whether we got a fairway or a green in regulation on a particular hole. Game Caddy will figure all that stuff out uh, for us. Okay. So the only thing we need to do, we, we didn't actually even need to open this menu because I'm not changing anything. But uh, in order to close the menu, we do need to click the apply settings button. So now we're definitely in basic game mode. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and import the course that we're going to play. So I'm going to come down here to course three and come over here and click the import course button. And we're going to play Empire. And unfortunately, these are not alphabetized. These are in the order in which uh, I or others created them and gave them to me. So Empire happens to be course number 14. So we'll click that little button there and then we'll close it. And once we do that, it'll automatically load onto the course three tab and it renames that tab to Empire. So we know uh, where to find that tab uh, when we need to use it. What you're looking at up here, if you're not familiar with the game caddy, these are the, uh, you have six possible pin locations for every hole. These are the yardage 
uh, distances those holes are from the tee and how many yards they are to the left or right of the center line. It also has some dog leg information, but we'll be ignoring that. And we're going to ignore the whole notes too. So these notes here that you're looking at are notes that are actually printed on the app of course boards for Empire. And uh, they, for different holes, will offer um, some adjustments that you could make. Um, usually it has to do with things on Empire. It has to do with whether you're hitting uphill or downhill. So yardage may be added or subtracted from a shot. There can be some other things uh, besides that. And uh, we're just going to ignore those, uh, those notes uh, for playing. There's some special features boxes down here that um, talk about some things um, that, again, we're not going to need to concern ourselves with uh, today. Um, this one has to do with uh, how the dog leg severity ratings um, were made, and this has to do with some extra notes that were donated by Dr. Tom Klein, who is the designer of the Apple Golf Master Game, and uh, he has some notes that uh, he like course notes that he likes to use when he plays, and uh, made them available for everyone else since they're not printed on the Apple course boards. All right, so let's go back again to the conditions tab because we now we need to figure out what uh, our pin number is going to be. You can roll your own app of dice for this if you want to, um, but I've created a dice roller that appears on most screens, uh, including the conditions tab here. And you click anywhere on these uh, two sixes here, and it will um, roll dice and give you a random app of dice roll result. So I'll click on that. And what we're going to focus on for our pin location is the one die roll. So think of that as the white dice. Okay. Now this image won't change. It's not animated, uh, but the numbers will appear over here. So here's the click. All right. And so the dice roll was a 12. So if it had been real app of dice, then there would have been the red die would have been a one and the white die would have been a two. So the one die is a two. We want pin number two for around. So I'm going to go ahead and click. Notice I'm clicking on the pin number. This is a button here. Anything with a double border, you can click on it and something will happen. Uh, don't click over here. Click on the on the actual label itself, pin number. You'll notice it says day wind, no wind. That's because we're in basic game mode. And so we never have any wind with that. And so we won't change that at all. But we do have course conditions to concern ourselves with. And um, I didn't point this out, but Empire is rated uh, an E for wind in case you need to use that in the future, but there is no special rating for course conditions. So we'll just roll the dice again, and this time we'll add two dice, and this time the dice roll is an 11, a 5 and a 6, and I'll come over here to course roll conditions. The, the wind ones are down here. The course roll conditions are up top, and 11 means we have wet conditions. Okay, So the ball is going to lose 10 yards of roll when it's in the fairway, and it's going to lose 5 yards of roll when it's on the green. So we come over to the conditions box here. Notice the double border. Click on that, and we just keep clicking until wet pops up, and you'll notice that these numbers here now appear over here. And the game caddy will use that information when calculating your total roll. Now, uh, Empire doesn't have a wind type, uh, and because there is no wind when playing in the basic game mode, uh, we'll leave this blank and have to worry about it. And you can leave tournament and round number blank too, but I'm in the habit of calling this these sort of rando rounds, and I'll just call it rando round number one. But you can leave these blank if you want. So all we need to do now is we need to enter our player, and we could use any four of these uh, caddy tabs to do that, and you can certainly play with four players at a time if you want. The game caddy is smart enough to figure out uh, whose turn it is to hit, and it will um, pull up that screen for you automatically when you're not on the green. But we need to enter player one here, and as I mentioned, it's going to be Fuzzy Zeller. So I've got his card next to me here. You can't see it. It's not on camera, but I will go ahead and enter that and this is his all-time great card from 1979 so again i like to add the year here but it doesn't matter really what you put in this box as long as there is text in here and not a number 
or not just a number, I should say. Okay. Um, now, playing in basic game mode, we don't have to fill out all these boxes here. Uh, we do need to put in the average W, which is a 4 on Fuzzy's card, and his average I, which is a 3. We're not going to be playing with momentum and bounce backs, but if we were, we could add those numbers in here. Uh, he has a 1 uh, for both of those. I'll spare you uh, an explanation of what those are about in the interest of saving some time. So the only other thing we need to do now with Fuzzy is to select three extra clubs to put in his bag so that he has 14 clubs in there. Um, and the options that you have are these white boxes here. So everything from a three wood down to a three iron. I'm going to select a four wood, two iron, and a three iron. Okay, so those are the 14 clubs he now has in his bag. We're ready to go. I'm going to go ahead and um, come back here to Empire. I'm going to load hole number one. And I'm also going to pull up uh, the actual course board for Empire and let you take a look at that. All right. And let me show that to you. Okay, there's Empire Golf Club, par four, 430 yards. I said our pin number was number two. And again, I can appreciate this might be a little bit fuzzy on your screen. So I'm going to show you that pin number two is right here. And that's going to be at 10, 20, 430, right 10. And that's what the game caddy will tell us when I flip back to that screen. Uh, again, we have a dog leg here at 280, but it doesn't affect us because we're playing in basic game mode, so we don't have to worry about that at all. We do have to be a little bit concerned about trees over here, and we've got some deep rough as well. Um, bunkers up here on both sides of the green and trees behind that green. And a pretty, pretty narrow fairway. Um, but... Let's just go ahead and grip it and rip it. I'm going to come back to the game caddy. All right, and you'll see, again, just as I showed you on the course itself, um, that pin location is at 430 right 10. That's the pin location from the tee. The shot planner is uh, telling us, you know, ideally how far we need to carry the ball, and it's also showing us the wet course conditions and how our roll is going to be affected. Uh, on the basis of that. But, you know, frankly, I think what we're just going to use is a driver off the tee. First thing you do is click the all-in-one menu button. And not only does the all-in-one menu come up, but you get the common average WI chart pops up automatically as well. Now, you can keep that from happening by uh, changing a setting in the configuration settings menu that I showed you, but I like to be able to see it. And you'll notice that what's shaded here uh, uh, is the four column, because okay, so that would be a play result number of four, because um, that's his average W. Remember, average W is a four, so that's shaded because more than likely our shot selection is going to be based on uh, that column. And so this just makes it a little bit easier to see. And, then, and the clubs that he doesn't have, those carry distances are already grayed out. You can see them, but they don't, they, you know, they're not likely to be uh, a club you'd select because they're a little less visible. Because he has an average eye of three, this column is also highlighted, and you can see those numbers uh, as well. But well, we're going to go with the driver because that dog leg was at 280. With wet course conditions, that ball's not going to roll very much, right? Maybe 15 yards. So we're, we're, we'll be lucky to even reach that dog leg. Um, again, remember we have aiming turned off, so you can't aim. And to keep you from being able to aim, the aiming tool has got um, grayed out the areas in which you would put in the numbers to aim. Same for working the ball. Uh, that is grayed out as a way to keep you from trying to use something that you're not supposed to use with these particular game settings. 
the all-in-one menu uh, defaults to whatever your longest club is. And so in this case, it's our driver. We could pick a different club if we wanted to, but I'm going to go with the driver and roll the dice. These are dice as well. So roll it. I get a 56, and that's not a great number. That's a 14 in the W column of Fuzzy's card. So I'll put a 14 in there, and we'll go ahead and take the shot. Now this shot goes 255 right 30. Uh, and so we're uh, stand a good chance of being in some of those trees that I pointed out. If we do get any roll, uh, it's go only going to be uh, a maximum of 20 roll. So 255 right 30. Let me come over and show you the course board. 255 is right here. Right 30 is 10, 20, 30. We've actually hit in between those two sets of trees there. So one of the things that the basic game rules do not address is how much roll you get when a ball is in the rough. For those of you who are, have been around long enough, you might remember the original Apple Golf game uh, that you could have played in the 60s or 70s. Um, and there was no adjusted roll for rough, as I recall, uh, playing that game. Now, my memory may be off a little bit on that, but the 2014 Apple Golf game says nothing about how the ball should roll in the rough for the basic game rules, but in the master game rules, it tells you that what you're supposed to do is take your fairway roll, whatever that is, that number is, in this case it was 20, divide it in two, and if you get an odd number, uh, then you round up to the nearest five, okay? So uh, we could do that, but I'm going to play this old school, and I'm going to give, and in this case, it really wouldn't make a great deal of difference, but I'm going to go ahead and give him that full 20 roll uh, that's there. If you want to play it differently, the game caddy will certainly let you, and, you know, it doesn't make any bit of difference at all. So we'll move that 10, and then another 10 for a roll of 20. So uh, when we click on the right things in the game caddy, that should tell us that we're at 275 right um, 30, I believe it was. So let's come back to the game caddy. And I'm going to put the 20 in here for the adjusted roll. Again, you could use 10 if you want to play master game rules. And you can see that our shot is now at 275 right 30, and we are sitting in the rough. So I'll go ahead and update that shot. And I would click over here. See, you got master game lies here, and then you got basic game lies, and then you got a few lies that are uh, really for both, but they're, they're sort of um, for special circumstances. Like if you have to re-hit from the tee, say a ball went out of bounds, and you got to you know take another shot from the tee. Uh, and if the ball goes into water or out of bounds, as a penalty stroke. So there are, some, there are some other options that are over here. From, but for the most part, playing the basic game, you'll just stick to these five lines that are here. Fairway, rough, sand, uh, in trees, and in deep rough. Uh, it defaults to the fairway because that's where you are most of the time. But in this case, we need to click on the rough column. Now the question is, you know, are we blocked by trees on this? And uh, we are not. And the way you determine if you're blocked by trees or not is spelled out um, in the APA uh, rules, including in the basic game rules. So I'll refer you to those rules if you want to understand how all that works. But we're not blocked in this situation. So I'll just click on record to record that shot. And now uh, what we need to do is to plan our next shot. So a quick look at the course board here. You'll, you'll notice, again, for those of you who have played the master game, you will um, be familiar with the concepts of a good angle and short-sided. Short-sided means that your ball is on the same side of the center line as the pin location. So we would be short-sided in this situation. We're on the right side of the center line uh, for the ball location as well as for the pin location. Uh, you would have a good angle if you're on the opposite side of the center line from the pin location. But the basic game doesn't um, involve anything regarding good angles or being short-sighted because those things are not covered in the basic game rules. But I wanted to add that because, you know, 
experienced master game players are saying, well, wait a second, shouldn't the game caddy tell me I'm short-sighted in this situation? No, it does not apply when playing under the basic game rules. Well, then the next question is, so what's going to be the target for this shot? You know, I, I'm, I'm, you know, if I was within approach range, which I'm not, you know, um, you know, where would I want to uh, try to line up this shot? Well, um, the target will always be the pin location when playing in the basic game rules. Now, we're going to be outside of approach range here. We're going to have an iron shot. Uh, so let me come back. You can see our carry objective is 165. Again, we still can't aim. So essentially what we're going to be doing is hitting for the center line. And that pin location is 10 yards to the right off of the center line. So, you know, we you know may not get this shot uh, close to the pin. But we've also, you know, are in the rough too. So that's not entirely unexpected. So let me click on the all-in-one menu. We got this 165 carry objective. We're going to get very little roll. We're going to lose five green roll, right? So uh, a seven iron is a 165, and if it lands on the green uh, and we get a three, our average eye, so that'd be 165, but that ball is going to back up five yards because it, it would get no roll. You can't tell the no roll from looking at this chart. I just know from having played a lot that that's what's going to happen. So that's going to leave us just a little bit short. Um, if we hit a six iron, it's going to go the extra yardage distance. Um, but what's going to happen is we'd get five yards roll, which is going to be canceled out by this five yards. So we're going to end up 10 yards past the pin location. So what I'm going to do, this is a little bit, you know, more sophisticated perhaps, but I'm, I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to hit the seven iron recognizing that shots that sometimes are from the rough actually get a little bit more roll than what they would get from the fairway. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to click on seven iron and just roll the dice. And I got a 44 uh, and he has a two in the I column for that. So we'll put a two in there and he actually hit this ball a little bit farther than we had planned. Uh, and that ball, unfortunately though, is going to go to the left. Uh, an even number from the rough with this club goes to the left. So it goes 440 left 10, and we have no green roll whatsoever. So we know that the distance to the pin is 430 right 10. So um, we're probably not even going to be on the green from what I'm looking at here. But let's let me click over here. 440 would be 10 yards past here, and then 10 yards to the left we've put that ball into the bunker there. Okay, now, uh, in, in some ways that's good because it lets me show you some more stuff here, right? So I'm gonna get the game caddy back up here. We'll just, we, we don't get any roll. You, 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 we're in, we're in, anytime a ball is in the sand trap or deep rough or in the trees, there's no roll uh, involved. So it just stops where it is. Click on the update button. And this time we're going to pick the sand column for where that shot's going to come from. We'll record it. And again, uh, we, what we see here in the approach caddy, when you're 100 yards or closer to the pin, uh, the approach caddy comes on and all this stuff over here shuts off uh, because we're going to be using an approach club to hit this next shot. Because we are within 20 yards to the pin, uh, we use the to pin distance. If we are 25 yards to 100 yards for our called distance, then we would use the called distance number. In this case, these two happen to be the same. But again, just remember when you're within 20 yards to pin, use that number when selecting your club. So I'll click on the all-in-one menu button. You'll notice that it's going to target the pin location, but I don't, you know, I wouldn't have to leave it there. I could edit that, but there's no reason to change that number because uh, we're going to be using a club here that is automatically going to put us some uh, distance in, in feet um, from the pin after we take our shot.
So a roll, I get a 34, not a great roll. That's a 15 in the A column, A for approach, clock, uh, 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 approach shot. I'll put a 15 in there. I'll take the shot. And you'll notice, again, every time you either use the 15 to 20 or the 5 to 10 approach board, uh, your result is always going to show up here in the putt distance uh, box. Okay, It's always going to do that. And if the ball goes in, it's going to show up as an in in this box here. But as it turns out, uh, our shot is now 13 feet away from the pin. And you'll uh, know that this um, shot was taken using the sand column. The game caddy knew that because that's what we told it when we recorded the lie over here. So one more thing. We've only got two strokes accounted for here on our caddy scorecard, if you want to think of it that way, our, our, our caddy notes. Um, so once you're on the green, you need to record that ball's location. Right now, the caddy thinks that ball's in the sand. So now all we have to do, we, we don't have to use the update arrow. In fact, we shouldn't use the update arrow in this situation uh, because we don't need to do a special recording of that green line. All we need to do is a little shortcut, click ball on green, and it will record the shot for us and add that additional stroke. Now, we're sitting on the green. All we need to do is go over to the putting boards, and the shortcut to be able to do that is to click on this players to putting boards in the putting caddy. And now we are on the putting boards. We've got regular putting boards that we're using. If we wanted to change that, we could come over here to the button that says change putting boards and select major tournament putting boards. And now you've got a different set of putting boards. These are harder in the sense that when you miss your putt, uh, you end up farther away uh, for your second uh, or subsequent putt that, that you need to make. Uh, and, and so uh, it adds an extra layer of difficulty. But I'm just going to go ahead and use the regular putting board. So we'll go back to that. We're 13 feet away. If we go for it, we use this column to determine the shot uh, result. If we decide to play it safe, which you can with anything over seven feet, we would use this column here. And you'll notice that it takes a 1 to 15, well, actually a 1 to 16 if you count P for par, uh, to be able to make that shot when playing it safe. Um, but if you miss, you don't miss it by more than three feet. And that's if you have a 36 on your card. And the worst number that Fuzzy has is a 33. So if we played it safe, the worst you could miss it by is two feet. Over here, though, in the 10 to 14 foot column, you'll notice that it is a um, 1 to 19 actually uh, goes in because of that P for par. If, if you don't know what I'm talking about, you can look down here in this box. Putt for par or higher is in. Putt for birdie or lower misses. Next putt is automatically made. Okay, But you'll notice that with a 33, he could miss by as much as 4 feet if he goes for it. But we'll go for it anyway. I'm feeling, feeling lucky here. And the roll is a 41, and in the P column, that's a 19. And so as we said, 19 is a P. He's putting for par. Uh, and if you've forgotten what par is, of course, you can look at the course board, or it tells you right here. So that putt is in. We'll go ahead and record that shot. Click on Transfer Putts to Scorecard, and the auto scoring is on. So that will tell us our, our total score or strokes for that hole was a 4. Uh, we had a sand trap because um, we we're in the sand within 100 yards of the green or pin, and it was a sand save because we got it down in um, essentially two strokes, right? The chip out of the sand and then the one putt uh, that we had. So we parred that hole, and because we parred it, nothing shows up in the over-under box. It just remains blank. Okay, so that's how you play without having the ability to aim or work the ball. Now what I'm going to do is change the configuration and give us the ability to be able to do that, and we'll play hole number two. Again, I can press Control-O, or I can come back to the Conditions tab and hit that button, and now we're going to allow. And it tells you it allows aiming and working the ball. Okay, so that... We want to apply it. That's the only change that we're making. And notice we're doing this mid-round. You, know, you can, you, there's no reason why you can't do that. Come back here to Empire, and now we need to load.
poll number two. Okay. All right, so let me call up poll number two and show it to you here on the screen. All right, there's hole number two. Our pin location is going to be right here in front, number two. And I'll go a little bit that way so you can see the numbers. All right. Um, and we got trees again, we've got deep rough again, and we've got bunkers again, which is a common theme uh, here at Empire, which is uh, Beth Page Black uh, in uh, New York, if you're not uh, familiar with the real course names. Okay, uh, the center line goes pretty much down the, the middle of the fairway up until, you know, we get around, you know, 300 plus yards and then, you know, we're, would be perhaps a little better off on the left rather than the right side of the fairway, but um, not, a, not, a, not a real huge difference here. I, I'm going to do a little aiming, I suppose, just to demonstrate how that works. I don't know that I would probably aim on this particular hole. Uh, if I was playing this for real, but let's come back here to the game caddy. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to aim five left, and I can do this before or after I open the all-in-one menu. I'll do it before. But you'll notice that these boxes are no longer grayed out now that we've allowed aiming. Put that number in there. And just a word about aiming and working the ball and what's the difference. Again, if you're new to Apple Golf, understand that aiming – for the most part is used when you want to hit across the center line or you're on the center line and want to hit right or left of the center line. Working the ball, on the other hand, remember what I said about being short-sighted? So working the ball is when you want to target a location, okay, that's on the same side of the center line uh, that you're on, right, that, that the ball is located on, right? So thinking of aiming as hitting across the center line, Working the ball as, is trying to target a spot that's on the same side of the center line. Um, now, uh, there are some other considerations, too. So on a par three hole, this is, happens to be a par four, but on a par three hole, you can't aim, uh, but you can work the ball. So, and, But you're on the center line when you're teeing off, right? So, uh, um, it, it, so that's, the, the, I guess, the exception to the rule. Okay. So let's go ahead and open the all-in-one menu. And I'm going to go ahead and hit a driver. We're aiming five left. So 265 with some roll maybe. We get a 62, which is a four. That's his average W. So put a four over here in the shot box. I'm going to take the average W, right, because that number is the same as that number up there. I can click on this, and what that will do is give me the option of reducing uh, the shot um, five yards in the direction it's moving away from the center line. So this four would go right of the center line. It would go it would go 15 to the right normally. Again, you can't tell that from looking at the screen. This is just me remembering what's on the boards. So I can make it go in essence, 10 to the right of the center line by selecting the reduce five yards. Uh, this increase five yards is a homebrew rule and uh, the no change, homebrew meaning it's not in the Apple rules that uh, some people have just requested that feature, so I've included it. And the no change means, well, I clicked on this button, but now I've changed my mind. I don't really want to do anything uh, in terms of moving that ball um, closer to the center line. But we'll select reduce five yards, okay, and then we'll take the shot. All right. So remember, we were aiming five left. The shot, which would normally have gone 15 right, only goes 10 right because I used the average W. So if you think about five left and 10 right and add those together, they, the result ends up becoming five right. And our carry distance is 265. So that ball lands at 265 right five. And we're going to get 15 yards of roll. So 265 right five. 
and then 15 yards of roll. So that ball's going to end up at 280 right five. And I could have let the game caddy figure that out for me first. Notice that the, the game caddy does not know what the terrain is. It, these course boards are not digitized in any way into the game caddy. Um, you, the human element, need to tell the game caddy what the terrain is. So we're gonna we're in the fairway, so we're just gonna leave it there in the fairway column and record that shot. All right, good. Now we're uh, within a hundred yards uh, of the pin it's on the center line uh, there's no reason to aim or work the ball we could just go uh, directly for that pin location I'm gonna call up the all-in-one menu and you'll notice that all these clubs are now grayed out because we're within 100 yards and now we're just going to be concerned with the approach caddy boards uh, and we'll select the 75 to 100 because that's are called distance and it is targeting 380 on the center line which is the pin location and because we have no wind the final destination or the final target is also 380 right on the center line so perfect shot puts us directly on the center line if we wanted to work the ball on the shot um, or aim we could do it by filling in numbers in the work the ball boxes here or in the aiming boxes that are just below it, but we're not going to do that. All right. And if we filled in the work the ball boxes here, then we would have to also enter in a work the ball number over here along with our shot result. The game caddy does two rolls every time you click on the dice roller and you wouldn't need to roll again. You would just look up the PRN for the shot put that number in here and then look up the work the ball uh, number, the PRN for the work the ball and put that number in here. So just go ahead and roll the dice. The, the dice rolls a 22 in the A column, that's a two. If I had worked the ball, that number would be a 43 and I looked that up in the A column on the Zeller's card and that would be a four and I would put a four in this box here but didn't work the ball, so if I put that number in there, now it's just gonna confuse the game caddy, so we'll leave that blank. And uh, there is no average WI when you're taking an approach shot, you know, because that's an A, not a WRI column. So we'll go ahead and click on the Take Shot button, and that ball goes 375 left five. So the pin's at 380, so we know that we're gonna be a diagonal away. Come over here, show you the course board. Uh, and there is never any roll with approach shots, and I want to emphasize that. So that shot ends up one diagonal away, but it is in the rough, and it is off the green. Okay, let's go back to the game caddy. Um, you'll notice that there are numbers over here, a minus 10, a minus 5, you know, shouldn't you move the ball? No. The approach caddy works entirely differently than the WI shot planner in this part of the game caddy. So you never assign any roll when using the approach caddy. The ball ends up where it ends up. You don't know how it got there. You don't know how much of that was in the air. You don't know where the ball landed. You don't know how much roll uh, was involved. You just know the final location. And that's not a game caddy thing. That's the way the app of game plays, right? But that's, I just wanted to point that out to you. Uh, so if you're a new player, you don't get uh, confused by why isn't they adding roll to this shot, okay? So we're one diagonal away uh, and we're in the rough. So all we have to do basically now is just record the shot. And I'll put the rough column there, record it, and we're gonna be in it. We're gonna end up taking another approach shot. Now we're within 20 yards, we're at five to pin. So we'll click on the all in one button. Just select this five to 10 approach board, roll the dice, a 21 is a four in the A column, put that number in, and remember that final putt distance is gonna show up right here automatically because we're within 20 yards and using one of those two boards that's there. Don't forget, you gotta click on the ball and green tool because we're now on the green and we need to record that stroke. All right, so seven feet away, we'll go players to putting boards and we'll go for it from seven feet. 
Uh, and again, one little shortcut that I use is if, you know, I'm, um, I, I, because this does two dice rolls at once, and they happen to be labeled shot and work the ball. That's really from an older uh, version of the caddy that did things differently than this one does. But, but if I need to take two putts, I don't bother rolling again. It's just faster to use this as my second putt number. Okay. Uh, so let's go ahead and roll. So my first putt number is a 54. So he, he actually is going to miss this shot. That's his worst. That's the worst number you can get for putting. So a 54 in the P column is a 33 and we're seven feet away. So a 33 over here because we were going for it. He misses that by four feet. So I'll put a four in here. And then again, instead of rolling again, I'll use the 62 as his second putt roll. And that's a 13 in the P column. And that's good uh, from quite uh, a, a long ways away. And certainly one through 26 is in. So we're in. And we'll transfer those putts to the scorecard. Takes a second to do that. And we've now played two holds. You can see uh, we bogeyed that hole. Shows up down here a plus one. It took two putts to get in. We did hit the fairway, but we didn't get a green in regulation on either of those two holes. Okay, so that's how you play uh, with the basic game you know, with or without aim and working the ball. You know, it took me a while to explain all this stuff because I'm explaining every little step along the way. You play this on your own, you'll zip right through 18 holes of golf, especially if you're only using one golfer like I am. And I you know, the game caddy will keep track uh, when you have more than one golfer. I do want to come back to this tab to show you something. Whoops, wrong. I clicked the wrong button there. Come over here. This who's away tool here keeps track of who's up. You don't, for the most part, have to worry about that. But if you see a star over here, okay, then that tell you that tells uh, the, the game caddy, you know, who is to hit next. Uh, don't hit out of order. You can do that, but it, most people get messed up if they try to do it. And so I just encourage you to hit in the order that the game caddy uh, tells you to. Um, and it will take you to the appropriate uh, player who's out, who's far, when you click the all-in-one bet um, a button. You do not need to do that yourself. You don't need to keep clicking on you know the different caddy buttons to get the right player to come up. All you need to do after you record the shot Okay, is click on the all-in-one menu and it will go to the next player who's out. There's one other thing you need to know though, and that is once uh, all players are on the green, okay, the who's away tool shuts off. It's no longer working. And so it's up to you to decide the putting order uh, once all players are on the green. All right. I hope this wasn't too much information. I tried to keep it as simple as possible. Go read those basic rules. Understand those basic rules. Some things are in there that didn't come up here, but like if you're in the trees or if you're blocked by trees. But um, you know, the main thing just to be aware of is that uh, you'll have some club restrictions when playing the basic game if that happens. Until next time, grip it and rip it.